and welcome to another episode of Rahalastapa. Uh, this week, the marvellous Richard Osman. Don't forget, you can become a monthly badger. Go com slash badges. Get all kinds of extras, including lots of cool stuff we've been putting up. Uh, including the full frame of Me 1 vs Me 2 snooker, the recipe for that very special thing I made for James Acaster the other week, um, an extra interview with James, me interviewing myself, the director's commentary of Brian Blessed, lots of stuff. Go com slash badges. Let me out of the docks. Shut up, Ali. I'm trying to do a, a serious intro. Let me out of the docks. I'm not going to let you out of the box. Please let me out of the box. All right, I'll get you out of the box if it will shut you up. Come on, out, up you come. Uh, hello everyone, it's me, Ali, from Arthur, Lee and, I uh, know, Ali and Herrings, sorry I forgot what it was called for a second there, that's alright, uh, Ali and Herrings, fist of, sorry not fist, I forgot what it was called for a second there, that's right, Ali and Herrings, Twitch of Fun, yes that's right, the Twitch of Fun, uh, there's a new podcast out, yes, with me in it, starring me, Ali, the terrifying Dentilicus Donny that once was used to masturbate Richard Herring's tiny little penis, it's not tiny, well it was tiny when you were little, I wasn't that little, I was still a grown man, yes I know, I'm saying you have a tiny penis. I don't think that's an appropriate thing for the intro to Rahalastar. Well, you can't stop me saying what the truth, Richard. I will tell the people the truth. Yes, look, I'm for some reason I've ended up doing a Twitch stream because I'm brilliant. That's why uh, with uh, my my 128 year old ventriloquist dummy who was once used in a mild sexual assault against me. Yes, I was. I wasn't happy with it either, Richard. I know. I know. It's not nothing. It's not your fault. That's why we can still work together. You're you're as much the victim here as me. I know. Um, it's, uh, called Ali and Herrings. I'm still the second one in the billing, uh, Twitch of fun. Uh, you can watch it live every Thursday, eight o'clock on twitch.tv slash RK Herring, as you can watch Rahalastapa's lives on Wednesdays, uh, at 8 p.m. And you can watch Snooker on Monday and Tuesday and Stone King every now and again. And we're trying to put some other stuff together as well. Uh, and it's also a podcast, uh, Ali, Richard Herring, Ali and Herring's Twitch of fun. If you can look that up on iTunes and subscribe, that would be lovely. It would be lovely to get a 128-year-old ventriloquist dummy to the top of the iTunes charts. Uh, or even just in the charts. It's a bit harder to get in them, in them these days. That will show that fucking Captain Tom Wonka, wouldn't it? Yeah, and Vera Lynn fucker. Oh, she just died recently, did she? Oh, sorry. That was in her throat for it. They both did very well in the charts, but he's 128, so he'd be... A... I apologise to fans of Vera Lynn for what Ali said. I'm not in control of what he says. You can't say anything these days, can you, Richard? You can say whatever you want, and you seem to say whatever you want. Well, and it's not my fault if he says stuff. It's him saying it, not me. Well, you say that, Richard, that uh, I think it is your fault. It isn't my fault, it's your fault. <laughs> I suppose it is. Anyway, let's not do a whole bloody episode of this thing. Uh, you can watch more of this uh, if you want to. If you're just listening on audio, it's an audio podcast, which I think is the best way to enjoy ventriloquism. Anyway, agreed? Then you can't see your mouth and anything. Which you can't anyway, because it's you talking. Yes, I know. I shaved today, which that takes off uh, some of the cover I had. Exactly, Richard. You've got to be careful. So, all right, please will enjoy. Uh, go to gofaststrike.com slash badges, twitch.tv slash herring. Those are the places to go. You can, of course, subscribe to Twitch TV, especially if with Amazon Prime, for free. So um, you can do it for free if you're with Amazon Prime. Check out the video on YouTube, Herring1967. Look, let's go. We've done enough. Thanks very much for watching this. I hope you enjoy, or listening, I hope you enjoy Rahel Estepa with the wonderful Richard Osman. Hello, welcome to my attic. Please welcome a man who's just seen a bunny rabbit. I was out with my dog. It's Richard Herring. Uh, hello. And uh, welcome to another remote and live episode of Richard Herring's languorous, sluggish, torpor podcast. Um, though I was, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I've got to that point with the lockdown where uh, I can't get anything done. I had a nap this afternoon. It was beautiful. Um, though I was hanging around with the creators of Scrabble Go, the new Scrabble app. Um, 
Because I think what Scrabble really needed was loads of jewels and cartoons and potential dating opportunities in it. That it was just wasn't good enough on its own. So I'm glad they've ruined it by changing the app. Anyway, they call it Rahalastaba, so I don't know if that's going to catch on. Um, yeah, I'm going. I am going a bit nuts. I'm drinking. Uh, I'm, I thought I was going to stop drinking and get healthy because I was worried about dying of the coronavirus and uh, being overweight. But I'm just g- getting eating crisps and drinking every night. Cheers. I've got gin and tonic tonight. Not that much left. Uh, and um, what what's been going on? Uh, well. I, I, my dog did a massive shit in the kitchen yesterday morning. At uh, well, I came down to it. It was like a huge. Someone had spilled a spilled a massive tub of ice cream onto the floor of chocolate ice cream, and most of it had melted around the edges, but the middle bit was still ice cream. That's what it looked like, uh, and it was horrible. I had a dry wretch as I tried to clear it up before the kids came down. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. But it was just wonderful to have some variety in my day. So I quite. I quite appreciate it because what no one is really uh, looking out for and no one's caring about is the bloggers in this situation. Right, I blog in every single day and there's nothing to blog about. You should be standing outside eight o'clock every night applauding me. Plus, it blogging hasn't been cool since 2005 and I'm still going. So where's my applause? That's what I want to know. Um, I've been coming up with stupid songs. I've, my, the, my, it's a good job I've not got a live podcast or anything because the standard of my comedy material has gone right down. Um, I've come up with a new TV show called Bumming for Gold, which is like going for gold. It's the same format. People from all over Europe coming together. Henry Keller's Henry Kelly is still the host of it, but they all have to bum each other, and the best one at bumming uh, becomes is the winner. Uh, and it's solely because I, I I was singing the theme tune like this: "The heat is on, the time is right. It's time for you for you to play your game." People are coming, everyone's bumming. It's better trying to bum the best that they can when they're bumming for bumming for gold. So that's what I've come up with. Uh, hopefully, I mean, it should be called Going for Bronze, really, but there we go. That's the best I could do. And I've got angry with Rogers and Hammerstein, the writers, for some reason. You know, it's boring in lockdown. Uh, I've, I feel that Doe a Deer, a female deer, is a very poor lyric. Uh, I don't know which one's which. If I was Rogers or Hammerstein, or Hammer- and Hammerstein or Rogers had come in one day and said, "I've written the lyrics to a new song," uh, and I'd seen the shit he came up with, I'd have been like, "Jesus, mate, your only job is to write words, which is a million times easier than coming up with a tune that people will like." This reads like you tossed it off on the bus over here. Could you not? It's like Doe a deer, female deer, Ray a drop of gold and sun. That's okay. Me a name that I call myself, pathetic, far a long, long way to run. So a needle pulley fed, La a note to follow. So couldn't you come up with something better for, for La, like La short for Los Angeles, or La the feminine in article in French, or La house scousers refer to their mates. Uh, and tea isn't a drink with jam and bread. I'll give you some examples that you don't have bread with tea. Uh, it could have been better tea the jink junction up ahead. Uh, T, a letter close to Z. T, in China, it's widespread, like the coronavirus. T, what I'd call dinner if I wasn't properly bred. There's loads of stuff you could have done, mate. So I came up with uh, a, a satir- satirical version of this song to take the piss out of Rogers or Hammerstein, whichever one wrote the tune. Do, a note to follow. T, Ray, a note to follow. Do, me, a note to follow. Ray, far, a note to follow. Me, so, a note to follow. Far, la, short for Los Angeles. T, a note to follow. Do, which will bring us back to Do. So that's a better version of it. That's the kind of thing I've been doing. I've literally gone mad. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying these uh, live podcasts. Um, I'm really just trying to bump up the viewers before we bring on our guests. It's up to 650 people. That's very good. Um... Uh, I hope you listened to and watched the rehearsal that came out today with Michael Palin. I mean, absolutely fantastic. What a tough act to follow. I would hate to be the guest that has to come on to this one tonight and follow Michael Palin. Um, next week, we'll be doing another one of these. I haven't got a guest for it yet. You can, uh, on Twitch, I'm doing all sorts of things. Snooker Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, sometimes Friday oh, at 7.30. Stone clearing most mornings about 8 a.m., depending on what time I get on. Up And Sunday, I am doing film commentaries to films that I have nothing to do with. I've done Sliding Doors. I've done Total Recall. This Sunday, if all goes to plan, I will be doing The Cobbler, Adam Sandler's uh, brilliant and best film. Um, so do tune in and come and see those and do listen to all the podcasts. Uh, do become a monthly badger. Go com slash badges. And if you are an Amazon Prime member, you get a free £5 every month to give to someone on Twitch. You could give it to me. Go to my YouTube channel, Herring1967, to find out how if you find it confusing. 
Anyway, let's get on with the show. Uh, my guest tonight is probably best known for being a regular contributor to Turn It Up on BBC Radio Sussex. Uh, that was when he was about 15 or 16 years old. What's he been up to since then? He was uh, flashed in a pan. We never saw him again. Will you please welcome Richard Osmond, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. It's Richard Osmond. Hooray. Hello there. How are you doing? What a lovely round of applause. Thank it you. It was great. Yeah, it's good. It makes you feel very special. Cheers. Um, can I ask you a question? Of course. Where did you get that gin glass from? What do you call me that? A schooner, maybe? Uh, yeah, I think we got it. But it, was a, it was actually a Christmas present, I think. Um, so I don't know where it came from. My mum and dad got it from. It's nice, isn't it? Would you like it? It's really nice. Well, listen, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need it. I've it's, got one um, for you. Look. Good on your mum and dad. <laughs> oh, thank you. Let me just... Wouldn't it be good if I had one here? <laughs> just take it from you. God, imagine if we'd rehearsed. <laughs> well, you don't rehearse. Imagine what you could do if you have production value. I know, it's, it's incredible. Uh, Richard's on his iPad. He hasn't got a computer. Mm. You've not got a laptop that could do this at home? I don't use a laptop. What? I don't know what I would use it for. I write, and I write on my iMac, which is, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I've had for years. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, I carry my iPad around with me, because what do you do on your laptop that you can't do on an iPad? Um, What's that true, it's true. I don't really do, but the, the, in fact, go. the iPad, I can play uh, Adam's Family Pinball on my iPad, which I can't really do very well on my computer, so it is better. Well, the iPad is I better. rest my case. Fair enough. Um, do you remember being in Turn It Up on BBC Radio Sussex? I do, yeah. That's where I started out. I was only like 15, yeah. and the year before me, Joe Wiley was on it yeah. when she was 15, 16. Clive Myrie, he was on it, you know, from the news. Yeah. So there was a few people who, uh, who came through there. Simon Mayo's brother, he was on it. <laughs> Jane they, Hill they was were on all it. there. Jane Hill was on the turn. Jane oh, Hill. She was, my, she was my best one. I what was it? Jane was Hill it just music, was it about yeah. music or something? Was it about what, what was it? What was the? Yeah, it was. It was very cool actually. Yeah, I sounds... got to interview pop, pop, Popoli itself and uh, Stone Roses came on, and it was really good. It was very, very. Uh, it was just cool. Young people's music. I don't think anyone listened to it, but we, How did you we get... enjoyed making. I interviewed the Beastie Boys. Oh, wow. How yeah, did you get that like job? How did you get that job at the age of fifteen? It was all volunteers. You could just turn up and do it. Right. Uh, and, you know, you did a few gig guides and you did a few bits and bobs and then eventually they let you present it. Wow. If you had an iota of charisma. <laughs> uh, and, back, and back then I did. For it was beaten out of me. By, and then that was uh, the last time you TV were... TV quizzes. You, you didn't, did you not appear on TV until Pointless? Or did, was, it any, was there anything in between uh, Turn It Up and Pointless? No, not, not a single thing. No. So I had a, I had a little 25-year break, <laughs> you know, to make a bit of money. And then uh, I went back to the uh, the fun. Yeah, well, all that experience on BBC Radio Sussex, uh, you know, that stood you in good stead. You didn't need to do any more. Um, so you are self isolating on your own. Yeah, you've been on your own for seven weeks or eight weeks in that in that. <laughs> I more mean, than I can't that. a house or a flat. Two months. It feels like more. It yeah. does feel like more. It feels. I mean, things from before. I was just thinking. It's more, I, isn't it? It's what. It, I think it is more, is isn't it? More? It? it was about the, well, yeah, night. No, it was only about two months. It was about the, I, I did the Michael Palin rehearsal on the ninth, I think. Oh, stop my... going on about Michael Palin. He Jesus. was so we're, good, We've heard enough now. He was so good. Hey, doesn't, make you, doesn't mean you were in Monty Python. You know that, don't you? <laughs> There's a chance they Just might. you talk to someone cool. They might draft you know, me I in. I to be the Beastie Boys, mate. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean I'm in the Beastie Boys. <laughs> you know? Although briefly I was in the late nineties. That's what happens if you do an interview with someone. After I've been on Pointless, that's probably because I did, interviewed you. Um, I was thinking because yeah, I did, we did, we recorded another Pointless Celebrities with me in it, and I, and it feels like a hundred years ago, but it was some point, some point this year, I think, wasn't it? Was it early, was it early this year? Was it like? really? Oh, I would be lying if I if I told you I had any sense of time when it comes to Pointless. It felt. It's, it it's feels to me a... like I was trying to work out who was. I remember I was on with Les Dennis. Me and Les Dennis were a team. That's all I remember. I couldn't oh, remember lovely. who else was even on it. And I can tell you every. Point other... is that you know that you know the double helix, the thing that has no end, has no beginning, and has no end. Yeah. That's like the point. So I never really know where I am. <laughs> and then they repeat some, and then I'm recording new ones, and then there's new ones on telly, and then there's, and so I, it's like a it's like a miasma. Yeah, if uh, if that's the word I'm looking for. I think it was February. I think it was I January it or February. We recorded it. It feels like a lifetime ago, and my my brain has been wiped. I can't remember anything about it. So I don't know if we 
It was my fourth time. I don't know if we I won. It was probably white beforehand. We might I don't know if you won. You I mean, know if four, you won. If to come on four times there, right? and not win would be embarrassing. Just the law of averages said you bad. win just by chance one in four times. Uh, especially as you won House of Games. I've won two House of Games. So champions. I've, which, which is, who do you think would win a champion of champions of champions if there was that if that came up? Who who would you have your money on? Uh, I think probably uh, Steve Pemberton. Ah, I'm disappointed. I thought that would be, be my guess. It's so interesting because after Steve Pemberton came on the show for three weeks, I was at, I was in League of Gentlemen. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was really good. I didn't realise that's how it worked, but that, yeah, it is. Do the um? Can you do the dead parrot sketch for us? I can't. I tried That's to do it. That's my favourite of yours. I tried to do it with Michael Phelan, but he wouldn't play ball. Um, what did you? Uh, I don't know if I could remember. I used but to. I used to know it all. Off by me. He was very. What I liked about Michael Palin, my favourite thing about Michael Palin, Richard. Let's talk about Michael Palin a bit more. Jesus, here we was go. that a lot of people? Oh, you got mentionitis. <laughs> a lot of people, uh, comedians especially, don't like to go back over their old stuff and talk about the famous sketches and stuff. Michael loved it. I was talking about the bit where he goes, you know, crucifixion, one cross each, but on nine on the left. And he was going, oh, I love that, and he went and just started doing it. It was brilliant. It was just, cra- it was crazy. But most It'd be people fascinating. Saw- How do you think? How do you think you would be if anyone ever asked you to go over one of your old sketches? That, well, I probably wouldn't be able I to what, that would, what would that be like? Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. You, will you let us know if it ever happens? I will let you know. <laughs> if I'm an old man, someone you says, can you remember by some the... whippersnapper. I can't remember. I see old Fist of Fun sketches and I don't remember them at all. So it's I can watch. But that's see, my memory's going really, to be honest with you. But... Hey, Rich, you and me both, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember any of them. <laughs> I knew you'd just come on and be rude. I, why, why, why did I ever do this? So, how are you finding lockdown uh, alone? Do you have the coronavirus, right? Yeah, well, I think I had. I had something very early on, and I never get anything. I never get ill, so I had something for like ten days. But it wasn't. I didn't have the uh, all the symptoms people are talking about. I had a few symptoms, so I think it was. And it was right at the beginning of lockdown. In fact, I'd locked myself down a week before. I think it was. If it was, I'm, I'll be glad. And I'm sure when TV starts again, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a bit, yeah, I, I will. Uh, I'm sure I'll get tested. But I, I think I had it. But I'm still incredibly careful, obviously. Yeah. I like called myself. And how is it being? I like to stay alert. Good. You should stay alert. It's very important. Thanks. Um... Who? <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't that ready caught you me. by surprise. I wasn't ready. <laughs> you weren't ready for that at all. <laughs> if you'd stayed you alert, failed. you wouldn't have got it in the first... I haven't had it yet, so I've, I'm very alert. You've got, got, caught you. Well, Some, you've probably got it now. Something so small, taking down someone so big, it must be the irony of that. Oh, can you imagine? I, I, as I was lying there, very <laughs> ill, I was thinking. The, oh, the irony, I was thinking. <laughs> See, I'm quite little, so they that, probably won't bother with me. symptoms there for that. That's the good thing about being small. Oh, yeah, they won't bother with you. Yeah, they're just going to go for the big guys, take them down, let them learn. They might do. Now Now you've met Michael Palin, yeah. they might, uh, you might be more of a target. They might be going, yeah, hey, you've met Michael Palin, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't believe it either. <laughs> so uh, how, how do you feel? I'm, I'm with people in my house and I've gone mad. So are you, how yeah. are you coping with the solitude? And are you st- have you met, have you seen anyone? You've been out to the shops and stuff, I presume. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it's uh, my best mate is isolating with her mum, and we talk like thirty times a day on um, on FaceTime. So that's nice. I talk to the kids every day. Um, honestly, I really like it. <laughs> I like being by myself. I, you know, I can go out and you know, I talk to people whenever I want to talk to people. And that's nice. Um, I'm writing at the moment, and that sort of uh, that, that keeps me busy. Um, every night, me and my mate watch telly remotely. We did. This is how long we've been in lockdown. We started with Tiger King, which is nine episodes. Right. We got all the way through Ozark, which is 30 episodes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and now we nearly finished Unorthodox. So we're absolutely, we're working our way through yeah. the, uh, the Netflix greatest hits. But one episode a night. Yeah, all telly's remotely one episode isn't a when night. you think about it. So. Um, how do you mean? Well, you watch telly. You said we've been watching telly remotely, but you watch all telly remotely, don't you, really? Unless you're in a telly show, in which case you're in it. Yeah, but I mean, you've got to, with me, that, that is half and half. It's true. <laughs> most, of, most, of the time, most of the time I am in it. Because um, I was, you know, I've, I've well, I'm, I'm trying to write, but I'm finding it, to, the problem with me, I have two young children to look after as well. 
yeah. and it's very that very exhausting and i'm not getting anything done I'm, I'm meant to finish a book by the end of this month which i might do but Ooh. i don't think i will what's the book about uh it's about international men's day oh when is that i don't know i've, I've stopped doing it now so <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember i've gone, forgotten everything i don't know if they'll have one this year because of the coronavirus probably that'd be typical they had, oh, yeah, they yeah. had International That'd Women's be, yeah. Day. When, when's International Coronavirus Day? That's like a good question. Know. There's a lot of days. I've been looking up. Oh, so you're, but, but your wife is a writer as well. She is. Uh, and is she, is she? does she have a deadline too? She doesn't. Luckily for me, she's got a book in, but she hasn't had the notes back, so she can't do any work on her book. But she has others. We're both trying to work. And what's amazing is you know you realise how much help you have from other people, <laughs> even just if it's school yeah. and your in-laws, <laughs> that actually to well, have to do absolutely that, all of it is just horrendous. The key thing about school is we've kidded ourselves over the years that culturally it's this incredibly important thing and, you know, it, it prepares our, you know, and actually you just think, oh, the only reason I send them there is so they're not in my house. <laughs> you know, it's literally the only reason. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that my kids, my if I was homeschooling, I'd, I'd be teaching degree level Chinese because that's what my daughter's doing. So I'm very <laughs> glad <laughs> that would that wouldn't go well. Uh, I don't think. Um, no, but anyone with with kids, I mean, that's that's hard. Yeah, it's been it's been. Day. I mean, it's been wonderful in lots of ways. And like you know, I was I, I'm yeah, lucky sure. to live in the countryside, and it's, that's so we can get out and I just walked the dog up the hill and looked at the beautiful village and the bunny rabbits jumping around. And uh, yeah, the dog isn't the dog isn't one of your kids, you know that. It right? isn't. No, that's fine. But I do have to look after the dog as well, and then it shits on the floor right? out of gratitude for all I'm doing for it. I heard um, that. But uh, but I don't. How are you coping with the loneliness in terms of having? Uh, contact with other human beings don't have physical contact of a maybe of a loving yeah, well, I mean, that's, yeah, i know what you mean but listen <laughs> i probably had more than you during lockdown uh <laughs> through the uh, letterbox <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly uh six feet apart um yeah that's hard isn't it but emotional emotional contact is it turns out I didn't realize. I haven't realized this for forty nine years. Emotional contact is more important. Is it okay? Uh, so that's a lesson. I still have a lesson learned. learned. Um, and yeah, I do, I'm in contact with people all day, every day, and everyone's chatting away and making each other laugh and all of this. So, and I'm really an introvert. I mean, I really am. Yeah. You know, any excuse to not go out is perfect for me. And this is a hell of an excuse to not go out. <laughs> like I said at the start of the year because my first book is out in September, and they make you write the second one even before the first one came, comes out. Yeah. So I'd said, I'm taking six months off. Six months, all I'm going to do is sit at home and write. And uh, I had no idea how true that was. <laughs> that is essentially, I didn't realize that occasionally I'd go to a mock suspenser wearing a face mask. I hadn't, I hadn't added that, but that is the, uh, that's the other big one. So have you but missed any, any part, telly yeah. yet? Have you missed any recording of TV shows at the moment, or is it all to come the stuff i know there's another house of games we just start we just started a, a, a run of another hundred house of games right we just started that uh we got two days into it um and we could have done a bit it was, it was before lockdown but we all said you could tell lockdown was coming yeah and so we decided to uh to to, to, to shut up shop um that, that's the only thing i've missed really and we'll knock those off in and the thing is, here's the thing is we don't have an audience on that show yeah so that's good six cameras and you know a tv studio they're at least six feet apart the contestants are quite close to each other but shoulder to shoulder so other than you know makeup and hair and all that kind of stuff it should be okay i think yeah and we'll all get tested that's it's going to be so easy to book guests because you know if you're coming on house of games you're going to get like a free coronavirus <laughs> test like twice a day <laughs> i was going to say for a week but you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well that's good Yes. Yeah, so, do you think TV is what is going to bounce back from this, or is it going to, is it going to change TV, or is it going to be? Are we going to have? It's going to take of... a really. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. I mean, like a really long yeah. time. So, certainly, you know, something like House of Games is about as low maintenance you can get in terms of getting close to people, uh, and even that, it seems impossible at the moment. In a few yeah. months' time, it might it might be more possible. Yeah. Um, but drama, of course, is in huge trouble. Yeah. sitcom is in huge trouble yeah. anything with a big audience is in huge trouble you know none of this stuff is getting back to normal anytime soon so they said this week um look you can now start exploring we can now open up the tv and film industry and i think people have taken that to mean you're going to start making telly and it's not i think it's them saying 
you can now start looking at how you might go about doing that and putting best practice into place. Uh, and that's going to take a really, really long time. So quizzes, you might be okay, but man, oh man, there's not going to be many big new drama series, Netflix series for a long time, unless they're those sort of lockdown things that people do. And have you started coming so, up with formats for that will work in remotely? You know, honestly, my whole lockdown has been people trying to get me to go on telly or radio <laughs> and talk about quizzes and talk about this or come up with new stuff. And I do just say, I, I just if I'm going to be in lockdown, I'd be in lockdown. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to have a halfway house. I'm sort of, I'm a little bit out of lockdown. Yeah. My brain can deal with it if I'm in lockdown. I can absolutely deal with it. What Second, about... I'm having to be on Radio 5 or talking to Richard Herring. <laughs> what about uh, a quiz a show called Lockdown me. where they lock everyone down in a house for eight weeks without anyone being able to see them and then ask them some questions? So clever. The only, the only thing, I've, I've sold one show during lockdown. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a like a because Endemol is a big European company, and I've sold a show called Bumming for Girls, which I'm really really excited about. <laughs> yeah, that's really good, and I've sold it in thirty territories. Made a we made a lot of money out that's of it. That's very good. So, yeah, yeah, really pleased about that. It's one of those ones you think, what? Why didn't I think of that? You wait till you hear the theme music. Yeah, the rights to get that tune though are going to be. He's that's Hans Zimmer or something, isn't he? Who wrote that? He's Hans big, Zimmer, yeah. He's a, he's a no, but Hans saw the. Hans saw the uh, saw the format. He said, okay. "I love this format you have. I'm in for gold. Uh, I don't know if you know. I did the theme music for the old one. I said, didn't know that Hans. And went, yeah, I did. He said, ordinarily it might cost you three hundred thousand, but you have it for free because I love the show. Okay. I love I'm in for gold. <laughs> so Hans is like, is he, is he he's still alive? Hans, but, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he must. Have I think so. Him. Well, if you talk to him, presumably he is. No, no one would pretend. Mm. I think he is. I think oh. uh, we mentioned him in the uh, Tim uh, Tim Minchin episode. I think he worked with Tim Minchin on something. I may be wrong. Oh, Jesus, Tim Minchin mentioned. Yeah. But the thing is, I'm not sure it was Hans Zimmer because I think Hans Zimmer is Swiss, and as I always think, <laughs> he clearly has some sort of weird Dutch accent. Yeah. And is Henry Kelly on board? Well, got Hen- is Henry Kelly on board to present? Is he still alive? Uh, Henry's been on po- Pointless Celebrities a few times. Yeah. And he's, uh, the thing people don't know about Henry Kelly is an incredibly respected and smart uh, journalist in Ireland, like a proper heavyweight journalist, yeah. and was for years and years and years. Then suddenly he was on Game for a Laugh and yeah. uh, going for gold. Which, you know, I'm mean, good on him for monetizing uh, his, <laughs> his journalistic integrity. What a lot of people don't know about Henry Kelly is he opened uh, Shipham Strawberry Fair in about 1981. Uh, and during that, I uh, had a little fumble behind the store with Sandra Hellier. A lot of people don't know that. about Sandra Henry Hellier? Yeah. yeah. Wow. She's a girl at my school. Wow. And what, where is she now? She's still in uh, Cheddar. Actually, I saw her. I should, probably shouldn't have mentioned <laughs> by name but there we go it's live i saw her last time i went back about five years ago i went back to cheddar and uh to do something and she in just in the village hall oh to cheddar so yeah and um she was there and she we gave each other a little look we remembered each other um was she married uh, i don't know i didn't i didn't uh, i didn't talk to her (laughs) um uh because i was embarrassed about what the things we'd done (laughs) <laughs> wow it wasn't anything it was so a very weird, it was very innocent to, to, that, to, to be fair i was it was very unusual at that stage for a girl show. to be interested in me uh, and we did i don't yeah. think we even kissed to be honest i think we just fumbled oh really yeah okay yeah but sandra sandra hellier we wrestled <laughs> <laughs> she's married now hold on i'm just i'm just googling her she is married yeah okay yeah. So who's she married to? Married to a mixed martial artist. Wow, oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah, one of those guys who fights in octagons. <laughs> oh. Well, she was a lovely, he's lovely girl. I hope she. We gave each other a smile, and I think uh, it was all. Good. I don't think I spoke to her. another at another occasion in Cheddar. The girl I used to really fancy, Bridget Seely, uh, she came up to oh, me, yeah. and but like I haven't seen her for. 25 years or something like that you know and she was now a woman of 50 as i was a man of 50 and she looked very good but i didn't immediately yep. recognize her but that's the problem do you, do you get that when you go back to places do people expect you to recognize them and you don't recognize them or do you recognize everyone well i went to my school was a big comprehensive school was 1500 kids in it right so i sort of went to school with everyone yeah who lives who's from where i'm from <laughs> so 
but even when you were at school, you didn't really recognise each other. Right. So the people I was mates with, I still recognise. Yeah. I still, I chat away with them on Zoom. But uh, yeah, whenever I'm back down in Sussex and I sort of, I walk past people roughly my age, I sort of think, oh, I bet I went to school with you. <laughs> But it's I weird because they've seen you in the interim and you, so they've at least know how much... You, I just find that so... When you're in your 50s, yeah. it's just like you'll see someone and you haven't seen them for 20, 30 years and you still remember them being... I think I was just... Uh, last night I was just thinking about what the girls I shared uh, university accommodation with and I, I haven't seen one of them again since, but I haven't seen one of them for about 20 or 30 years. And I was just thinking, God, she's not, you know, she's going to be a, a 52-year-old woman now. And I, in my mind, she's it's still crazy. 21. So I can't even picture. One of my best friends from, uh, one of my best friends from university, I said, we have dinner like, sort of once a month or something and have a, have a gossip. Uh, and she's an incredibly senior high court judge right. at the old baby, right? <laughs> and let me tell you now, when I was at university with her, she was not an incredibly senior high court judge. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say far from it. Uh, but now she is, you see, and it's yeah. so weird to think she hasn't changed at all in any respect whatsoever, <laughs> other than got older and had kids. Yeah. But you just think, how how are you one of the most senior judges in the country when you used to do X, Y, and Z? <laughs> Which I won't mention because yeah. she is a judge. Yeah. Bank robberies and stuff, murders. Oh my God, she was terrible <laughs> for the bank robberies. <laughs> Loved it. But it's, it's, it's university, isn't it? We used to back in those days because yeah. we didn't have the internet. Yeah. So we'd go and rob banks, building societies. It's it's weird. Where I mean, I do money. find as time goes by that, the, that time concertinas in that way that I, to me, a lot of that stuff from the light, late 1980s, it was for me, was at university, um, just seems so fresh. And if I can't quite get my head around the idea that, that the idea of 30 years passing doesn't seem possible because I'm still 23. So that's, yeah, the, completely, that's the problem. My daughter's at uni now, and yeah. she lives uh, her story. She just said, yeah, 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 it's exactly the same as me. Oh, yeah, same as me. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Not really. But you do. And I had a big Zoom chat with those people I went to school with the other day, so I've known them since I was 10. And and then you're like kind of 11, 12-year-olds again. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. It's great, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's lovely. It is nice. Um... Lots, of people in, lots of people in telly, you'll know this, lots of people in telly when... You go out to the house, they've got friends round. It's they're never friends from school. They're always friends from other television yeah. shows. Which is weird, right? And they go, Oh no, they're, they're my mates. Yeah. And you think well, you went to I don't think you went to school with them <laughs> really, did you? <laughs> I do find that weird. odd. But that's that I think that's quite interesting. A lot of people I don't know, aspire to becoming famous so they can get into those famous circles and then do leave everyone behind. But I think you kind of Maybe. You sort of see people being friends with, you know, people of my age who are friends with Elton John or go to all of Elton John's parties. And you kind of think, that's kind of, why are you friends with, why are you friends with Elton John? And why would you want to be friends also, with Elton John? Why is Elton John, why is yeah. Elton John suddenly become friends with you? I mean, that's weird. It is. Do you think, Elton John, were you, just, were you just walking down the street one day and you bumped it, you, like you dropped the groceries <laughs> and Elton goes, oh, let me pick that up for you. That's a nice jacket. Where's that from? Go, oh, I go there. And suddenly you go for a drink. Yeah. I always think that when people suddenly get start getting invited to these parties, the second anyone becomes famous, there's a group of parties they get invited to. Uh, and you must think, hold on a minute. <laughs> why, is, why is it just me and Malala at this party? So, that's a bit odd. But it's just, uh, listen, that's the, so that's the way of certain stratum of society goes. That's not happened to you then, so you're not, you haven't become friends with, I mean, you, you mix with a lot of celebrities on point the celebrities, for example. Oh, yeah, but you know, not you know me, not afterwards. <laughs> straight in the limo, straight in the stretch, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and off I go. Look, I mean, over the years, I've worked with those, certainly as a producer, you work with those of people. There's a few famous people that, that you could sort of go, no, that person's genuinely become my friend. Yeah. Uh, more writers, really, than on camera people. But there's a few, but not 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 a huge amount. Although I like lots of I like lots of people I work with. Yeah. But come on, you've got enough friends at some point, don't you? <laughs> well, I don't make. I've sort of shed friends, and I don't. I'm finding lockdown quite Pretty easy because I don't really go out anymore my wife sometimes goes out I'm very happy staying at home with my wife and my kids and I don't really have go apart from going out to work which I wasn't doing that much I don't really go out anymore and I don't want any new friends but the problem we've moved to a village so you've got to make friends my wife's made friends which means I've made some friends in the village they're very nice okay but yeah. um 
but you know, I'd rather I'd rather not have made any new friends. We play, uh, uh, we're okay. playing, we're playing like games. It's really good, actually. We play on Saturday nights. We play game board games and stuff and poker and things online now. Now we've got the lockdown, so it is quite nice having new friends. But it's sort of that's fun. Yeah, but it's um, yeah. I'm quite I'm quite happy to to shed as many people as possible and get it down to a. Well, listen. I suspect. I suspect they're they're pretty happy too. That's so. my uh, that's my guess. So. Also, you've got to shed a few. So you've got to make room for Palin, right? <laughs> yeah. He has. He's he, zooming Palin after he this. He did right? agree to be my dad. I said. I said, would he take over to be my new dad? My dad's still alive. It's a bit rude to my dad, but yeah. and I offered my mum up as part listen, of the bargain. Listen, you've got to have a succession strategy. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah, really do, and you know. So that, that sounds. Is he the same age as your dad? More. I mean, my dad's a little bit older, but my mum's a little bit older than him. But my mum looks good. Um, she looks a bit like Bobby Robson, the yeah. ex England manager. But she's she's a good looking eighty three year old. She's grown into that. Uh, and wow. you know, she probably some women do right. Yeah. <laughs> and... Some women, it's when they hit eighty, you suddenly go, hold on a minute, <laughs> have you been hiding? So I think for Palin, she would be a prize. I think, um, and she's a very nice lady. I'm not my dad's a nice person as well, but. Yeah, if if it came down to it, if someone said we got a gun at the head of Michael Palin and a gun ahead of T.K. Herring, I would have to say kill T.K. Herring. For I mean, I think that's, I think my dad would accept. Yeah, that absolutely, absolutely certain about that. That's yeah, a big <laughs> statement to make. I think you because you want to push the button on that. I mean, a I like Michael Palin more than my dad. That's the main thing. And B, mm. um, just for the good of the country, I think my dad has done a lot of good for Cheddar and the surrounding area. But I think. Uh, more people would be upset by the death of Michael Palin. Have you ever read Strangers on a Train? No. Right, one of the greatest crime books of all time, Patricia yeah. Highsmith. And, but the plot you'll be aware of is two gentlemen get into a conversation yeah. on a train and very casually both mention a murder they would like to happen. Yeah. Uh, and before you know it, they swap murders and yeah. you know, this, that, or the other. But essentially, if somebody listening at home will probably think you've just done that. Well, when no, that say, wasn't... There's was a gun at the head of... Well, that wasn't what I said. I'm saying if someone so. if someone got me in that situation and said you have to choose, it's like Sophie's choice. I'd say, can we not kill either of them? They go, no, no, we really we kill one of them or both of them. It's up to you. Um, yeah. My dad's a bit older. Michael Palin has a lot to give still. I think. I think my dad's had a good life. Um, you know, you feel that you know it's not it's an odd thing to say. My daughter doesn't uh, my daughter doesn't love me, so I think she would do the same as well. My daughter's always telling me she hates me. She's only five. It's not fair that oh, I really? thought, I thought they'd like five? me for a okay. bit. But she's always she's always. I think she's mainly joking, but it goes on enough for me to think if my daughter was in the situation, if they had Richard Osman or your dad, I think she would yeah. she would let you live. So I've, I've accepted okay. it. Well, well, there's the other murder. Yeah. So we now have our, <laughs> we have our strangers on a train. Our plot is complete. Good. It's, there's an Oedipal thing to it, isn't there? So, you know, it's good to... It's good to isn't Oedipus about someone killing their dad so their mum can marry Michael Palin? Yes, I think that's it exactly is. And then you also think Michael Palin's a lot better off than my dad, I would imagine. And so, you know, I hope he lives another 20 or so Can I years. ask you a question? Yeah. If, if you talk to him about anyone who made telly in the... 90s, 2000s, I'll tell you exactly how much money they got. Exactly. Yeah. How much money do you reckon Palin's got? I wouldn't have a clue what they made back in the day or how much they made out of the movies. I think, well, they, well but Palin has not got divorced or done any of the other things that all the others have had to work for. So, like, Cleese has had yeah. to do all this extra work to pay off all his 10 wives, so. whatever he's got. And Palin has done all the extra work but not have to pay anyone off. So, hasn't he just bought his whole street? Doesn't he just buy his his own street he had a house and then he bought oh, really? the houses around the house so i think he owns quite a lot of north london somewhere so that's the trouble is with, with a lot of that gang is they've got these beautiful big houses up in hampstead yeah. but they bought them in the 60s when you could yeah. you know people could buy houses so that's not really a good indication of how much money they have but he's he must be doing all right he, he's got he's got the book money yeah he is, um, I mean, no offence to you, Richard, as being, the, you know, you're not the next, because there was Ashlyn B after, directly after him, who uh, coped very well with following on from, but
but he has excelled in every single thing he's done. Michael, Michael Penn. He's sort of done sure. six or seven careers and got to the top of all those careers. So he's a successful yeah. actor, a successful, successful comedian, writer, novelist, and, travel journalist. And he's about to fuck your mum. Yeah, he's going to have a crack on her. Has he been on, but has he got a pointless yeah. trophy? Has he ever been on pointless celebrities, Michael Payne? He has. He has. No. Funnily enough, he's never made himself available <laughs> to the selectors <laughs> for some reason. What do you reckon he's got? 20 million? I, um, I do. Well, I don't have a very good idea of how much money people have. And I look at my own career and think I haven't really done all that well. And I've got quite a lot of money. So, that he, yeah, he must, okay. have, he must have loads. He must have yeah, yeah, I hope several so. million. And I'm sure he. I'm sure he uses it wisely and gives a lot of it away and what have you. If you can tell, right? Yeah. I don't know. He deserves as much <laughs> money as possible. You reckon he doesn't? You reckon he doesn't give any money to charity? <laughs> I think he keeps it. He's got this very nice, you know, he keeps image, all of it. But it just goes. No, I'm having it. A is from Yorkshire, as am I, and so you know, he's he'll be a bit canny with it. And yeah. B, um, why not? Why not? Just you know, he's earned it. Let him have it. He's had to go and do the Dead Parrot sketch again in the O2. Yeah, they they must you know that O2 gig. They did something like fifteen nights at the O2. Oh, and yeah, that's big money. It yeah. cost a bit. They put on a good show. It was a very good show, and there was yeah. high production values. But you know, you're taking half a million pounds a night. They're getting a million each for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. So you know, so they're sleeping doing... on a bed of money. You reckon? Paying. I think he's doing right, but I bet you in. 1985, he probably didn't have very much money. Okay. But I think probably everything he's That's done since then. I think probably, you know, because the BBC never used to pay very much, and I'm sure they didn't get much from Monty Python, and they were always struggling for, like, the, George Harrison had to bail out Life of Brian yeah, yeah. and stuff. So you'd think if they had, they'd only needed three million or something for that, so they obviously didn't have the money themselves or weren't prepared. Palin was keeping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was holding it yeah, back. Of course, that's the way. Talking of London, yeah. I had a good quiz question the other day. I did, yeah. a, I did a Zoom quiz yeah. uh, uh, with a very. Um, um, so this question was uh, Nisha Party, who's a, who's a uh, film producer and very talented one. This is her quiz, so it's her question. Okay. I'll say it now because it's one you have to think about, and I'll give the answer at the end of the uh, okay. uh, at the end of this. And it's the, what is the only London tube station that has a Z in its name? Ooh. Ooh. Now, just let people at home have it. Mind you, you can probably see the... Uh, can you see the comments? I can see the comments, so someone might come up with it. Um, King's yeah. Cross, as someone has said, is the first answer with a Z in it. With a Z. Something like Crozier's... <laughs> Crozier's Z or not a Crozier one. Collier's would. Um, I'll say this, I didn't get it. I was I was human when I didn't get it. I thought there was like a Furs Hill or something out in yeah. out on the end of the, of the central line. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get it. I've said Crozier. Someone said well, Crozier. Oh, someone's got it in the someone's got it in the chat room. That's oh, very good. Well done. Yeah. yeah, very good because it's it's quite obvious. I mean, it's not obvious, but it's quite a bit. It's not a big one, but it's yes, central. It's a big one. But I'll say at the end if people okay. are not looking at the. Um, okay. Do that. Well, you are do, you've been doing quite a few quiz shows on your. I didn't. We, I know we talked to you quite, quite recently in Edinburgh. But we didn't talk about you were on Catchphrase. Did we? Didn't really talk about that, did we? When we when I last. Oh. You did an Days. amazing job on Catchphrase. Love that. I made the most money anyone's ever made on Catchphrase. Yeah. Whatever else I do on telly in my whole career, that's it. <laughs> that was, that's, I love Catchphrase. And I went on, and it was I was terrified. I made, I made more money on Catchphrase than I made on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> that's how well I did on Catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> it's great fun, though. I was on with Greg Wallace and Penny Lancaster, uh, and... I thought for a while, right at the beginning, so it's Greg and Penny, who've both been on Strictly, and um, Eva Mulhern, who's very, very good, said, um, oh, these two have got something in common. Uh, can you guess what it is? And they both did like a hit movement. I said, oh, they've both been married to Rod Stewart. Uh, but it wasn't. They'd, they'd both been on Strictly. Uh, the first couple of catchphrases when they came up, I thought, oh, Wallace might not be bad at this. You know, he had a he had a bit of skill. Yeah. Uh, so I was quite fast on the buzzer, and then you realise quite quickly if you've watched Catchphrase all your life, which of course I have, you you, you have a set of skills which are going to carry you through to the yeah. end game, and then you slightly have to take your foot off the pedal. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really they don't really like it if you keep buzzing and say stitching time saves nine. <laughs> you know, every cloud has a silver lining. You're not like they don't like it. No. Uh, so I took my I took my foot off the pedal, but only. When I when I realised that maybe Wallace didn't have didn't have the, the chops that I thought maybe he sure. had, 
But if you've watched that show and you're like, you know, you know what they're hinting at. Yeah. You know, you know what Mr. Chips is doing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, you know what he's up to. You say what you see. You do. Uh, right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I won 56 grand and I won money. It was amazing. I yeah. went all the way up their pyramid uh, at the end. I was just shaking. <laughs> You know? And you took that home. That was just for you. That was that money was all for you. You took all that money home, spent it on. The I, to be fair, yeah. To be fair, uh, I uh, I took forty eight thousand of it. <laughs> I, I, I gave the I gave the other ex to uh, the other eight to an ex wife. <laughs> I don't have any ex wife. Uh, no, I gave it to charity. <laughs> That's good. And millionaire, you did you did the Jeremy Clarkson millionaire. I haven't seen any of the Jeremy Clarkson's millionaires except I saw a bit of your one. He's good. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. And I thought I got up to the thirty-two, and you can set your floor. Yeah, so I did. And I talked to my my charity, this is charity child side, it was brilliant. Because I did uh, catchphrase for it as well. I said, if I get to thirty-two, do I have permission to just absolutely go for it? And she said, yeah, of course you did. So I did. I thought I'm gonna, and at one hundred twenty-five, one hundred twenty-five, I got one wrong. Oh. Uh, but I was really didn't even use my phone a friend. I was really <laughs> focused on getting right to the end. But I, 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 what can you do? Is, what's the best I, celebrity? I uh, who wants to win? No one's ever won the oh, well, million. John Barnes was on with me. And he was on eight thousand pound question, and he had a question about the ranking of poker hands. Right. Uh, and you could see he sort of knew, but he wasn't. It's was one of those questions that I'm going to ask the audience. Yeah. And the audience got the wrong answer. Okay. And he went with them. He got knocked out because the audience gave him the wrong answer. Ooh. Oh. Bad, Do you think I, well, I've always thought I have got a lot of strategies for quiz games. On that, ask the audience if it's a high one that people don't know. And if you know it's not one of the answers, I would say to the audience, before you vote on this, if you don't know the answer, can you please That's vote for A? Said. Do you do that? Yeah, because I, I said to the producer, does anyone say to the audience, <laughs> do not touch the button at all if yeah. you don't know this? And they go, no, no one does it. I said, but can you? He said, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you just that, say, cause... don't don't vote if you don't know, because that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, cause, yeah it's real. I just thought, I thought well, why wouldn't you do that? Did you see the uh, Did you see the quiz, uh, the millionaire um, drama about? Yeah, that? I loved it. See, I, loved what I it. thought was interesting about that. I thought more than what they did or didn't do that they did was um, the fact that the guys were cheating the phone calls in. You know that they were they were coaching people and doing that whole network of people getting onto the show and getting onto the show multiple yeah. times. Which you'd even at the time think, oh, that's, I mean, you think, oh, they must be ringing up a lot and blah blah blah, but. That whole thing was that was rigged, uh, so that you know I remember trying that was to get a bad on thing. That, that's why. Yeah, if you have a show where your contestants are a bit randomly, it's quite hard because you do end up with just what Millionaire did with a series of sort of very faceless and a fifty-year-olds. I yeah. mean, that, that's it's just what you get um, because they're the ones who are willing to put the time in. And I, yeah, I think it was a real problem for them. But uh, I thought one of the old pointless producers was the AP, the associate producer on that episode of that show. Yeah. But she told us the whole story, and she's the one who overheard the Ingrams talking up, rowing afterwards. All right. this kind of stuff. Ah, I loved it. Loved it. I I interviewed I have them. Strong, yeah. I interview, I did. Used to do a poker uh, chat show, so I, I would have liked the poker question from that John Barnes got wrong. Um, and they were they were two of my because they after the, after they were on <clears throat> Millionaire, they sort of tried to make money in lots of different ways. So they, I think they sort of claimed they played poker or they played poker for a bit, or he did. But he was, I, mean, I really like, I think she's, I, there's something very sexy about her cold detachment that they got very well on the uh, programme, I have to say. But she's right up my street and she's got a nice big nose and I like that in a woman. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I like something, something to hang on to, isn't it? That's why, the way I look at it. Uh, I suppose so. <laughs> I think there's something okay. about a strong face. It's tough, it's tough, it's tough and mostly tough you now we're all wearing face masks. Yeah. It is. Well, I, mean, I quite like it. It's sort oh, of coquettish. Yeah. You sort of think, ooh, what, no, I suppose what, so. what have yeah. I got home with today? No, I'm married. It's fine. Uh, and, uh, you, must hang around outside, you must hang around outside shops as women just take their face masks <laughs> off and just must be thrilled. <laughs> sometimes thrilled, like sometimes you, disappointed. That's the, the beauty of, uh, <laughs> of clothing. Uh, but he was a, he was a very uh, strange man. He lost some toes in he a fire on, accident, didn't he? Or some sort of yeah. lawnmower accident. We did a show on Channel 4 called The Games, which was um, <coughs> All right, celebrities yes. playing sports. Uh, and it was a really good show. But he, he he came on that. And she was there a lot as well. She was rather likeable. He was very likeable, I have to say. Um, so, that, yeah, that was one of their posts. Because, listen, obviously they cheated and that, you know. But 
if you're the, the one thing about the, the one thing with quiz that was never said it wasn't even said in court is Serdor, the production company wants someone to win a, win a million quid yeah you know they, their algorithm says we can afford to give away a million quid once every two series you know and when we do our revenue goes crazy because everybody rings in the next day sure so it's not like we've lost a million quid it's like we've just had a massive hit show and loads of people are now applying for it again and it's given it a you know so it's a good thing for them to have yeah. this million this million quid given away but um i, I don't think they brought that point up in court which i would have done <laughs> So, but they they should have given. I mean, would have those guys have got anything? They won't have got anything from the the dramatization, will they? Even uh, their lives, unless they. No. So it's. I, I feel a little bit sorry for them because also, it's like you say. You know, you're doing. You're doing. Am I allowed to do this? It's finding what was interesting. I think they just found ways to nudge things into their favor, and it's almost like, oh, this is just a game. We're just having fun. I mean, it would have been crazy if they'd been sent to prison. I think for it. Um, but... Oh yeah, I agree. And it, and, it, <clears throat> and listen, I know they protest their innocence and and, and what have you. So, I, but I just this is just my point of view that I agree with the court ruling uh, that found them guilty. But um, yeah, I sort of think there's nothing in the rules explicitly to say don't cough and don't. You. <laughs> so I sort of think it's kind of a caper, right, more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. You know, because there really isn't a victim. Because actually, the production company would have made money out of it. They would have made money out of it. It's not just no one loses, everybody wins. Yeah. So you sort of feel, that's why people love the drama so much, because you could tell if someone was, it, it was good on right or wrong. There's also, no one's harmed here. Even if it, even it was wrong, that's okay as well. Yeah. What was interesting, is, and the bit that where he said an answer, he thought it was, and the audience went, ooh, it was like an easy one about Coronation Street or something that everyone would know, and he didn't know what it was. But they went, ooh, so he knew he'd got it wrong, and he made that point in court. But that must you know, a lot of people must have had that help from from the audience anyway. Could you hear the audience when you were in the hot seat, or are they in a bit hotter on this? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no not at all. But you, you did it on pointless. But you, yeah. that's why you always take a first answer on pointless. Because millionaire, you don't take a first answer because the whole point of millionaire is the drama is in the choice. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's all that show is: is am I going to go for this? Am I not going to go for it? Am I going to change my mind? That's what that show is. Whereas most quiz shows, first answer is the only one you get. So on pointless, all the time, someone will say, "Oh, I think it's Ghana," and the audience will go, oh. <laughs> and they know they instantly know they've yeah. uh, they don't know why they've got it wrong but they know they've got it wrong <laughs> yes that's but they can't change their mind do you think they'll ever do a, uh, a quiz about pointless because i've noticed on pointless sometimes on the celebrity edition one of the other celebrities will whisper the answer to one of the other celebrities i've not done it because i'm very fair and truthful but i've heard people whispering the answers and they get you tell them off but do you think mm. there'll ever be a big scandal about that and they make a quiz about that oh god it's non-stop most of the time <laughs> You just say, I can't remember who it was. It was like Sonia or something. It might not have been Sonia, so if it's not Sonia, don't sue Sonia. It was someone like you. Uh, and uh, someone said, oh, sorry, I did say no conferring. So you just went, we're not conferring, we're just discussing the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that's pretty brave. I remember someone, we had a golf question, and I can't remember who it was. It was someone who said, I know nothing at all about golf. I know nothing <laughs> about golf. So you're like, okay, well, we're going to need something. And almost always you can hit because they're mic'd up, so you hear it. Yeah. And I didn't hear. But she said, "Oh, I just thought of someone, Bill Nicholson." <laughs> and I said, "Can I just say one thing? Firstly, if you know nothing about golf, then it's an unusual answer. But secondly, Bill Nicholson is exactly the answer that someone would give if someone else had just whispered Bill Nicholson, <laughs> which is the correct answer, <laughs> into their ear. <laughs> I mean, come on, come now. So if that'd been Major Ingram, I'd have taken him to court. Yeah." Because uh, the pointless trophies are a very valuable thing. They c- you can sell those for like two hundred and fifty quid on eBay, so it's you know anyway. I think so. Yeah, I believe that's what someone at the I should do that. Someone of the production people told me. Wow, they okay, might do that. Yeah, you probably got you I've could got probably two. Get... I've got I've, I've got a regular one, yeah, and I've got a thousand episodes one as well, like a special thousand episode. Zander, yeah, doesn't have his thousand episodes pointless trophy anymore. Okay, you know why? Do you know who has Zander's? Thousand point this trophy. Ben Miller. Mm-hmm. Almost bigger than Ben Miller. <laughs> Elton John. Bigger than Elton. So I said it's what? Bigger than Palin. Right. Zander's thousand point this trophy. The Queen owns it. Can you believe that? What a stuck up he is. She's Zander already got loads of stuff. Don't give her that. Know, exactly. But... <laughs> 
They did a um, he went up to do uh, the Women's Institute in Sandringham, right? And booked yeah. him to come and do a talk, right? And that's the Queen's Women's Institute. So he turns up there, and whenever me and Zander do stuff, we, we play a game of pointless. So he's up there. I wasn't there, by the way, not invited. Uh, <laughs> so he plays a thing of pointless where it's this half of the room versus this half of the room, and then the two team captains. So Marjorie is this team captain. I think that's over here. Queen puts her hand up. So the Queen is the team captain over here. And so if they play this game on pointless, you start, we do our higher or lower thing. Yeah. So how many people say, you know, this? Was it higher or lower? Uh, and the Queen absolutely rinsed everyone. But like Zander was saying, you know, he'd go, um, we, we asked 100 people to name um, a Harrison Ford movie. How many people said Raiders of the Lost Ark? Uh, and, you know, the team over there would say all 50. And then the Queen's team has to go higher or lower. Uh, and the Queen's team would always go, oh, we think higher, we think higher. And the Queen would just go, no, it's lower. <laughs> and she win every time. She's like a demon. So her team won. And as a captain, the prize was Xander's pointless 1,000 episode trophy. That'll be worth, I bet if you put that on eBay, if the Queen puts that on eBay and signs it, <laughs> that's going to be worth three or 400 quid, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a day, I've got a Richard Osman doll that I'm just storing away until either you die or I'm about to die that I could put on eBay and I reckon oh, nice. I could probably get thirty quid for that. So I've got I've got one. The only House of Games stuff I've got. Yeah. I've got the doll. Yeah. Uh, and I've got which wasn't a prize, but we all got given one when we were filming uh, House of Games at Easter egg. Okay. I've got that's a really nice. lovely House of Games at Easter egg. And Tamara, who's the producer, who uh, you've met, who's just brilliant. Yeah. He said, oh, whatever you do, don't eat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tamara. So I still got it. I still got it on my lap in the kitchen. That's very good. Well, nice. hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, you'll pass on and I can make some money from, from oh, that. Oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. That'd be nice. It's good you can eBay someone. A lot of these people in the chat room will go crazy for that. I bet. Who would give me 500 quid for my... It's a golden one of Rich Osmond as well. There can't be many of those. And I'll, I'll chuck in one of my like, two trophies. Also, it looks like um, either it could be me, it could be Got One, it could be Super. Yeah, so, so you can. It's, uh, yeah. it's multi-purpose. I'll just wait for the first one of you to die, and then I'll sell it on eBay as a tribute to you. It'd be nice. I wonder who it will be. It's interesting that it will be one of us. Yeah. Right. Me, Super Perkins, I've got one. One of us will go first. Yeah. I would guess me. I, I think, think... they're both healthier lifestyles than me. Probably. My guess is you should do that as a death day podcast. You could do predicting, and then the scores are collated yeah. at a later date. Of when they actually, yeah. I actually it quite like, like it when two celebrities me, die on the same day, and they're sort of there forever connected in time. By you know, they might have met yeah. at some point in their life, but they're basically unconnected celebrities, and they die on the same day. I always think that's quite interesting that they're they're both on the news at the same night. And uh, you're yeah, like connected. I mean, less them. interesting for them, I guess. Yeah. Who would you like to die on the same day as you? On if you if you could choose any one person to die on the same day as you, who's a celebrity? It's a good emergency. Oh, question. that's a that's a good question. Thank you. Um, maybe maybe uh, hire Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil. Okay. I was trying to think of someone nasty. <laughs> it's good, yeah. But you know, you might live for a long time. You know? So you're uh, you're in a way conferring. You know, if you if you're going to live another fifty years. They will live for another fifty years, so it might not be the thing. Other you than might if that pact is made, I yeah. could, I, if I took my own life, he would, he would, he would go with me. Yeah. So I guess someone, I guess Bill Gates. Okay. Yes. If you, if Bill Gates knows he's going to die on the same day as you, and you could literally, whenever you want, to pick up the phone saying, "I'm feeling a bit down, Bill," <laughs> uh, you know, and he'd like send you a billion quid to say, "No, come on, man, perk up." That could work. That could work. Yeah. Um and um. Your book's coming out pretty soon. I'm very excited about your book, and you've got a, a, a fantastic uh, newsletter that you send out to people who are interested in your book with games and stuff involved in it. Is that right? Um, so yeah, I've the... got... Um, so, so, so the, the book is out in September for the Thursday Murder Club, and it's a crime novel. And Penguin, who are my publishers, who are absolutely lovely, they said, you do a newsletter that tell people about the book. I said, honestly, people... I'll tell people about the book, and if you like the sound of it, and it's a really good murder book with a gang who solves process of murders. Uh, so I said, well, I'll just do a weekly newsletter. You can have it branded, but I'll just do, while lockdown is on, I'll do this weekly newsletter with 50 questions a week, uh, and it's great. And so everyone 
plays the quizzes, and that's really nice. But yeah, that, I, do, I get to do an advert for the book every week. Yeah. But it's only a really tiny one. <laughs> and I always say to my pop, I said, look, I'll put it in there. It's there, and there's a buy that you can pre-order it and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, essentially, it's become a, a quiz. So every week, started with the letter A, then B, 50 questions, and all the answers begin A or begin B. And I've just finished G, which comes out tomorrow. Okay. The link is in my bio on Twitter if people want to sign up for it. It says the Thursday Murder Club newsletter. Don't panic. There's not a lot about the book in there, I promise. Uh, <laughs> although you will like the book. But it's, it's, main, it's mainly a quiz. I'm very much and looking forward week, to the book. It feels like it's been a long time. Like this has been, you know, been, it's good you're getting all this pre-publicity. It's a very clever way of doing it. But it feels like you, because we talked about it in Edinburgh last year. So it's mm. uh, it's been a this while. This is how books work, I think. Yeah. It? yeah, it was probably finished, finished in kind of November. But they, it takes them a lot, you know, they do proofs and they send them to certain group of people, then more proofs and this, that, or the other with, with books. And, it, you know, yeah. it, it just takes a long time. But I do have to say to them sometimes, look, I can't keep doing publicity for it because everyone quite rightly is saying it's not out for three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I say, so maybe with a few weeks to go, I'll, I'll pick it up again and yeah. uh, do it because I'm ever so proud of it. But I don't want people to get bored of me talking about it. And you're not doing the audio book yourself? No, I've got um, Leslie Manville Very doing good. the audiobook, just one of my favourite actors in the world. And, you know, Mum, which I think is amazing, and Oscar nominated and all that. Uh, so I'm absolutely thrilled because the main narrator of the book is a sort of 78 year old woman. So right. it, it wouldn't have been right for me to, uh, for me to do that. Okay. Maybe your mum would have been my good. My mum would have been good. I think you could have pulled it off. <laughs> I know so much. She's amazing. Uh, I heard some of it the other day. It's incredible. Oh, good. Well, I've got an emergency question. Michael Palin answered this one really well. No pressure. But um, okay. if you could have, obviously, like... How audio, much but... money have you got? <laughs> I bet you've got more than Michael Palin. Uh, I, uh, audiobooks are obviously quite a recent thing. Is there any historical or, you know, not, it doesn't have to be even that long ago, an author you would like to hear read their own book that we can no longer have that presumably because they're dead i'll read their own book yeah. that's interesting i thought you were going to say uh is there any old book you'd like to hear on audiobook and i was going to break it to you that <laughs> they do do them yeah but yeah. you can listen to dickens I've got some. i would say funny enough we talked uh, about strangers on the train earlier when you uh, asked somebody to murder your father yeah um when i was writing i was listening to all the ripley books written by patricia highsmith which are such brilliant books but she was such a curmudgeon <laughs> and so dark uh and so you know i would love to hear her telling of those stories okay. i would love to hear the bits where she was delighted i suspect they'd be the opposite of the bits where the reader is delighted and i'd love to hear the bits where she's horrified because they'd be the opposite as well because she's such an incredible writer and those books are all brilliant i'd love to have her voice in my head <laughs> just or you'd have to wash your ears out afterwards i think <laughs> Um, cool. Well, we're coming up to the end of the hour. I'll ask you a couple. Oh, I should say uh, you made a uh, you made a guest appearance on my upcoming Radio Four sitcom Relativity, in which you played yourself. Oh yes, do you remember that? Yes. Amongst all the. Uh, I re- do I? <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. It was um... I could barely get through it for laughing. <laughs> In fact, I, mine wasn't a comic role. Mine's, I was very much a straight man. You were very much did. Richard Osman uh, dealing with my mum. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. yes, which is... Not, uh, not for the first time. <laughs> not for the first time. So do look out for that. I think it's out in July, though. They might bring it forward, to, you know, to help the nation through this difficult time. Uh-huh. That's, nice. that's, Mor- what the nation, that's what the nation are wait, waiting for. Yeah. Um, and I was... Uh, you, you did the uh, I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue tour shows. You, you've presumably done some of the radio shows of that as well. But uh, yeah. that was, uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately we lost Tim Brooke Taylor um, a couple of months ago. I mean, ago. it was, it's so, because we did that in January. Yeah. It's me and Tim, Miles Jupp and Tony Hawks, lovely, and Jack D and a few other people. Uh, and yes, I was sitting next to Tim every night in these lovely big halls. And then afterwards, as you know, with any board shows, everyone goes back for a drink afterwards. Tim always makes sure that Tim has his white wine. And his lovely wife, Christine, was there every night as well. And it was such a joy to be with him. And it almost impossible to think of someone you could, that had less life force. I mean, he was yeah. so present and so sort of uh, so, so funny and so witty and charming. Uh, and we had such a laugh. 
And so that was a terrible shock. I mean, yeah. a really terrible shock. I mean, really, talk about taking before your time. Goodness me. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's the sort of thing about this virus is everyone's like, oh, it's old people and people who are ill already. But actually, you know, a lot of old people still have a, of older people still have yeah, a lot I of mean, time left. <laughs> and also it's not even yeah, true. Yeah, this, this is, yeah, yeah, this is a guy whose time it was not. Yeah. That is for sure. Uh, and the virus took him away. And, you know, I think about him often and friends, parents who've, who've died. And you think that whatever you think about it, you might be cleverer than the rest of us. I don't know. Whatever you think about the science, you know, whatever you've read, it's it's a big call to make if you're going to go out there and not have a face mask and not be careful and not wear gloves and all that stuff. That's a big call to get wrong. Yeah. It really is. You know, I, and sure, you're if you're young, you're not going to be ill. I get it 100%. But you know what? You'll meet somebody. You'll meet somebody. You'll meet somebody, and then somebody dies. You yeah. say, "Come on, so let's let's just let's just not." Yeah. Okay. That's my view. It's a good view. It's a correct view. And uh, on on a more positive uh, virus note, you've been more you, positive than that. More positive than that. <laughs> what more positive than that? Okay. All right. Listen. Is all right. Hold um, on. You you are now the unit of social distance because you are. The problem is, I think most people don't necessarily know quite how. You know, you can say it's one Richard Osman. You've got to be one Richard Osman apart, mm. but that might be hard this to visualise. This is visualize. the problem, because people say a lot. They say, "Oh, I always say to my mum, it's one Richard Osman apart," and it's fine because I'm two meters, so it's kind of perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you don't know what two meters is, you think, "Right, well, I'm one Richard Osman apart." But then you think, if you don't know what two meters is, you don't know how tall I am either. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm there, I get it. And if, if you've, got, there, you've got to down, lie down as well, it. presumably, to for it to work. So it's really, yeah, I have to be able to imagine you prone. I was. I was in the, in the queue for um, uh, M&S in Chiswick the other day. Don't judge me. Uh, and it was five o'clock. Uh, and there's a guy in front of me in the queue. So we're outside the queue to get in. Uh, <laughs> my shirt, I had what I would say, I don't know if it's a time of day, a perfect shadow <laughs> from behind me, right? Like a perfect shadow. Yeah. And I could see, and my head literally just reached the guy in front of me's feet. And I thought, I mean, that's nicely done. I mean, that really, I, I, I am genuinely there. I'm genuinely a Richard Osman apart from the okay. man in front of me. That's good. You know, uh, but I, that, that service is not available No. to most people. I does accept it, that. Does it mean that you are safe walking along because you are two metres above the ground? I presume the virus has to crawl along the ground to get from person to person. So that's my Certainly, understanding. Yeah, the, gra- the ground virus I'm safer from. Yeah. That is for that is that is for absolutely sure. I'll give you that. Uh, but also, your height is also your wingspan, right? Yeah. For almost everybody, yes. You stretch your arms from there to there. Apparently, that's your height. Okay. And so, uh, I walk through Chiswick like that, like an aeroplane. I don't actually, but I'm going to because I just thought of it. It's a good idea. Um, yeah. And uh, I've been finding it difficult to get hold of Soleros because I'm in the countryside. And I usually eat a Solero a day. That's my treat. Mm. You've been making uh, smoothies out of Soleros, I understand. Hey, I am not kidding you. So because I had, I got three because there's a delivery yeah. place. Uh, and no, I have a normally have a smoothie. I put some raspberries, bit of yogurt, or something. Yeah. Whatever you fancy, some rubbish old powder I buy from Holland and Barrett, uh that does nothing, I'm sure. Uh, but you know, you got you can't have too much spirulina. Uh, but yeah, so I just thought, hold on a minute. This Solero has got kind of sorbet. It's got yogurt. It's got all this stuff. So raspberries. Yeah. Solero, uh, exotic fruits, Solero, a okay. uh, little bit of water. Oh, my days. Nah. It was sensational. I don't approve so of good. wasting a Solero. I, I can't get Soleros out here. It was so good. Honestly, once you want to really go to Soleros out in Oxfordshire. <laughs> I go to, I go to Waitrose. Not... They've got to go to Waitrose in Hitchin, though, so... I'm trying to avoid now. I've managed to oh, yeah. almost become. Uh, I think I might go tomorrow because the only thing I can't get is Soleros. And I honestly, last year, I ate a Solero every day last year and I lost loads of weight because it was my treat in the day. And now I have five or six treats that aren't Soleros. And uh, so I'm going to go gotcha. and buy all the Soleros in Waitrose tomorrow. But do that. Put them in with a, with a punnet of raspberries. Yeah. Uh, and then that's, your, that's one of your five a day as well. <laughs> and you drink it and it's just. It's honestly terrific. Okay. It's really good. I'll give it a go. I'll buy some extras. My kids have got into them. They, I get them like uh, fruit pasta lollies and kids lollies. And then my oh, daughter yeah. is going to have one of lollies. daddy's lollies. They're mine, the Soleros. And my, my daughter started saying, can uh, I have one of daddy's lollies? 
And then, so they go, the there's only three in a pack. That's three days. But if the kids have them, that's one day. One one box of Solos is a day. I know what to do. What? Got my advice? Yeah. Suddenly say your favourite lolly is a twister. <laughs> it's love twisters. Because that's white and green and red. We've got those. And so, can I, can I have one of Daddy's lollies? There you go. One of Daddy's <laughs> twisters. They don't I just wrote about for... twisters in my... In, my, in, in, in the new novel, that's the kind of stuff you're getting. Okay, good. Well, we'll look out for the new just novel. Wrote about that. Are you doing yeah. any more of your birthday game podcast? That was really good. I enjoyed um, it. it was fun, wasn't it? I really enjoyed doing it. But, you know, then TV got in the way. And again, I'm not, I'm not someone in lockdown thinking, how do, how do I get through the day? Because I, I get through the day so easily. <laughs> <laughs> like embarrassing me easily. I'm not someone that, I mean, literally, I think, okay another day done uh so uh, i don't think so but maybe maybe when maybe when we come out the other side of this sure. i might do a few it's really, i really enjoyed it yeah good well thank you so much for uh, sparing us your time i'm glad you're feeling better uh, and uh thank you something as small as a virus can't take you down you're so big just look at it logically you're so much bigger than a virus that of course they would need to get together there'd have to be so many of them to take you on i mean how many viruses yeah. equal one richard osman it's got to be a lot I mean, it must be, must be 20 or 30, must yeah, it? Yeah, at least. So I think you'll be okay. At least. Uh, uh, good luck with having sex in lockdown. That's what I'd like to say to you. Thank you. In fact, married people for the last two months have had more sex than single people on average. It's a very small amount more. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad I got God married. God bless you, one and all. <laughs> Um, thanks so much for doing this Richard uh, we'll be back next week with another one of these I don't know who the guest next week is yet uh, ladies and gentlemen Richard Osman thank you very much see you thank soon you. I'm stone clearing in the morning <laughs> bye thank you very much How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>